Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about how Star Trek Picard missed the mark in season two. So, I like Star Trek Picard season three. I think season three was really um, done well. It's not perfect by no means, but it's not the worst. If I had to rank it, season three is the best. Season one comes in second. And then there's season two. And yes, I have conquered my fear and watched season two. And I wish I never did. The first two episodes were actually really good. But then once they go back in time, that's when things kind of go for like a bad turn. Then, once I got halfway into the series and I only had like maybe four episodes left, I took a very long break. And when I came back, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to fast forward doing like the boring parts and only watch the action stuff. And even that was hard to get through because I didn't even want to fast forward to that. I just wanted to skip to the next episode. Season two is a very dreadful season. Now, here's the thing about season two. It's not an abomination like season one and two of Discovery. It's not a travesty like Laura Dex in general being that of a goofy parody. Season two is just pure lazy in their thing. And not only is it pure lazy, but... They tried to copy other Star Trek movies and television shows, but to no great of, um, prevail and everything. And it's okay for them to take from other Star Trek shows. They do that all the time in Trek. Like, you know, every new season of Star Trek, they just recycle an old plot and turn it around. But when they do that, they do it to a great effect and make it cooler than what the other one used to be. Here, on the other hand, they act like they didn't know what the heck they're doing. And that's because the showrunners have no idea what the heck they are doing. And it's baffling. On top of that, Patrick Stewart, who I still have a lot of respect for, unlike other Star Trek fans who ever since season one have been making fun of him. It's like y'all praised him in the past, but then once this show is not to your liking, you piss on him and everything. And I'm not gonna do that. However, what I am gonna say is that while his intentions were good, because he does have some creative input into series, being like an executive producer and stuff, he should just act. Like, you know, the whole why Picard went off into space and became a Starfleet officer didn't make no lick of sense, especially what we know about Picard and the next generation. And it made the Picard character, ever since season one of this show, they have made the Picard character too emotional, too weak. And it's a shame because he is Jean-Luc Picard. And he's the greatest captain in my opinion. And they just reduced him to just like a normal human person. He can have emotion. He can have a backstory. But it's just the way it was executed just didn't make no sense. And I get he wanted to tell this tragic story of an abusive father to his mother, because that's what he experienced in real life. But he could have went about it in a better way. It was just odd and weird pacing and stuff. It's like we've like ever since this show started, we've never known Picard to keep having all these flashbacks, a thing that happened so many years ago. And like, you know, him constantly dwelling on it. Like that's not the Picard we know. Not only that, but like, one thing I've noticed about this season, or this series actually, okay, it's always weird how everybody on the show can somehow remember things that happened hundreds of years ago or thousands and thousands of years ago without the help of a ship's computer. Yes, people in the 24th century are a very smart and geniuses, but they ain't that smart. And every time they have to rely on something that happened in, like, say, Star Trek, the original series, they're all like, oh, wait, hold up. I'm remembering something. Kirk, his Enterprise did this, then they did that, then they did this, then they did that. 
How are you going to remember all that in the moment you need to remember all that without the help of a ship computer? In other Star Trek series, they done that as well, but they used the computer for help and did research before they told anybody. It's just odd and weird. And then there's a lot of weird things they threw in this series that just could have been done better. When they did the whole time travel thing, why didn't they do the bell riots? Like that was the perfect time to do it or the new Genesis wars or something like that. That's what fans wanted to see when they found out they was going back in that time period. But they just completely abandoned that for a weird, once again, um, Oh, if this person dies, then Starfleet would never happen. They've done that before in other Star Trek series, but they've done it so much better. Not to mention when like, oh man, and, like, and then there's other things like the dude from Voyager from the 29th century. They got the same actor. But he's playing a completely different character. And this would have been a great time for time travel shenanigans to happen and stuff with him in it. I'm just kind of like, I don't get it. Now, I can excuse and look past the no allegory thing. I'm not harping on that. I don't care if they're talking about the pollution on Earth. I don't care if they're talking about racism on Earth. I don't care if talking about immigration on Earth. Um, show it, fine, whatever. That's not what I'm harping about because... Apparently, using allegories in the past didn't help those fake Star Trek fans. And by fake, I mean the people who scream woke all the time saying Star Trek currently is too political or Star Trek has too much diversity. It's like, have y'all never watched Star Trek in the past? No, you haven't because you're a fake Star Trek fan. Anyway, but my problem is the writing. My problem is the pacing. My problem is the cheapness of this season. My problem is the overall execution of just everything. It just was not handled very well. And the reason why it's so cheap and they had to go back in time and not use that much special effects. Because have you noticed everybody's transporter is the same except for the watcher? <laughs> the Borgs are the same. The Vulcans are the same. Um, somebody else's is the same. I forget who else, but they're all the same because it's cheap. Why? Because of Discovery Season 1 and 2 and Picard Season 1. Let's just say they was very expensive seasons that pissed fans off. And Paramount's kind of like, yo, we got to reduce this budget <laughs> because people aren't liking this crap and we're wasting too much money on it. So it had a very cheap feel to it. And so like what they should have done this season they should have done one of two things. If they were going to do time travel, it should have been bigger and better. Because one problem with um, the Picard series is that they try to put two plots in one season and they get kind of muffled around in their thing. They're not consistent. In season three, they did a better job of doing that. Although I wish they would have picked two different alien um, villains and stuff. And so... But yeah, they always try to combine so much crap because now we got the whole, okay, we have to prevent the Federation from turning evil. But then we have all this genetic stuff with another soon in their thing. And they just kind of combine both like storylines together, which didn't make no sense. The primary story doesn't really get them. Well, actually, there's probably three going on here. You got the Borg as well. But anyway. Yes, once again, we got Borg. Every stinking season, we got Borg. And it's kind of like every time they bring the Borg into the Picard series, it's another slap in the face of Captain Janeway and the finale of Voyager. It's kind of like the, 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 the finale of Voyager is pointless now. It is basically should just should get like thrown out the history books. Because we know the queen keeps surviving. Some members of the board keep surviving. It, it was a huge piss in the face to them, man. It, it, it really just was. But, like, when you got the main storyline, 
the main storyline really didn't take shape or focus. The person that they were supposed to focus on, we barely saw her. So what was the point? And why did she have to be a uh, Picard? Like, Renee Picard, what was the point of even having her on the show? They wasn't even going to focus that much on her. Not only that, but like, they barely interacted with her. She was barely the main focus. And they could have used just some random made-up character who didn't have to be related to the great legacy of Picard forming the Federation and all this other crap. Really, they just didn't have to. And then, not only that, but they realized during this season that, you know what, we need to start dropping some of the weight on this show. <laughs> because it's like characters they created for the first season started dropping like flies in this season and they always got written out towards the end in some kind of weird way because in the third season they were like look man we gotta do a soft reboot of this series <laughs> and that's what happened in season three it was the biggest soft reboot ever every character who got created from season one just was like a no-show in season three Except for Raffi, because they had to continue that whole like seven to nine romance thing, which still doesn't make a lick of sense. And all they do is argue. So why are they even together? And so but I'll explain why they're together, because it's the dumbest reason ever. <laughs> and so like even Eleanor, who does not appear in season three, his ship gets destroyed. But oh no, the showrunners are like, ah nah. He just went to another ship at the last minute. No, not in my head, Cannon. He doesn't. He got blown up. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, so when it comes to the characters of this season, first let's get into what the actual plot is about. They're on a the brand new Stargazer and everything, and Rios all of a sudden has become a captain again. How the heck of anybody knows? They don't like explaining small, minute details like that in this series no more. And so, like, he's the new captain of the ship. And all of a sudden, like, there's like a Borg vessel that shows up. And they want the one and only Picard. And so, like, at this point in time, he's at his vineyard. And at his vineyard, like, Laris is there. And apparently they're going to start a relationship. Um, okay. <laughs> and not only are they going to start a relationship... But it's kind of like, well, what happened to her Romulan dude that she had in the first season? Don't know. He got written out. And so, like, we, you know, we get to, like, you know, the Stargazer, he's there. The Borg show up. Seven and Nine eventually at some point shows up who has Rio's ship. Um, Raffi and all of them show up. Apparently, Raffi, once again, is in Starfleet. Um, they've, like, you know reinstated her which that's good they reinstated her they had no business finding her but i'll get into raffi a little bit later and so oh look it's eleanor he's in starfleet academy and stuff and so the borg lady shows up on the ship and the borg vessel looks completely different even to the point where picard and seven and nine don't recognize it seven don't want the queen on on the ship Cards are like, let's hear her out, which is weird because he doesn't like her. Also, how the heck is she still alive? Because didn't J Way like jack her up <laughs> and everything? And so, like, she's trying to take over the ship because she's trying to prevent something from happening, but we don't know that yet. They initiate the auto destruct and the ship blows up, and now we're in a different reality. Q who appears in this season, decided to, hey, let's go back in time, change something, and Picard has to be the one to save it. And so, like, you know, of course, Picard, he's pissed at Q's, like, leave me alone. And Q's all like, don't you remember the last thing I told you or I was going to tell you in that finale of TNG, the trial never ends and blah, 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 and stuff like that. So... The Federation is now the Confederation, and they're all evil. Now, this is what the season should have focused on, the evil Federation. 
Why? Because if there's one thing New Trek does very well, it's evil federations, mirror universes, stuff like that. And everything we saw in this alternate reality was awesome and amazing. And it would have been nice to see our characters navigate and figure out what the heck is going on because they all have their memories. But this is what's crazy. <sighs> Where's the Android girl? She was shown up in the beginning of the episode. She says she's going on some kind of diplomatic thing and then she's not in this new reality. So I'm assuming she never got created and stuff. And so with that said, you know, seven of nine is now the president of the Federation. Okay, whatever. She doesn't have her implants, which is really cool to see because I've always wanted to see her look more human and stuff. And so basically, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on. Humans hate aliens. They're trying to kill them all and everything. Um, they captured the new board queen who is an alternate version of the original one. Because remember, this is an alternate reality. She looks cool and everything, and but her outfit looks more like clothes instead of like robotic armor. And that's kind of weird. And I don't really know how or why time travel affected her the way it did because she was all the way in the delta quadrant but you know events happen differently so when they try to take over earth things happen differently and so it's kind of like okay sure why not i can buy it you know what i'm saying um and first let me just say rest in peace annie worshinger Ah, such a tragic loss. She was such a good actress. I've seen her in Marvel's Runaways. Lovely woman. I hate cancer. And, you know, ah, why did it have to take her out and stuff? And she did a really good job as the board queen. She's now my second favorite. My first one is, of course, the original Alice King or whatever her name is. And, you know, Susan Thompson, she's third. <laughs> Plus, she didn't like playing the role in a way, and so whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I still like Susan. But I, I like this new version as well. People of Earth have captured her, and they're going to eradicate her and stuff. So they realize, okay, look, we got to go back in time. Uh, we need to set things right and everything, and all this other crap. So they used that whole Star Trek, um, I forget which movie it was, where they go back in time by doing a slingshot effect. While this is going on, the, the Confederation have figured out that, hey, these are imposters or whatnot. Um, I think Raffi kills Seven of Nine's husband in this reality. And so, like, um, watch him I call him. Um, so they do the slingshot effect, but here's the problem. They need somebody who's smart enough to like do the calculations like Spock did and then travel back in time and stuff. And so they need the board queen, which is just a weird thing on its own. But you know, hey, they do need somebody who's like super, 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 super smart, right? Which you would think, okay, why not seven or nine? Well. 7 to 9, the Picard series in general, just isn't intelligent no more. Plus, since she was never assimilated by the board, she don't have the, the mind of the collective in her and all this other stuff. So, they do that. But while they was running from the Confederacy, um, Eleanor got killed. Well, who cares? I don't like that character. <laughs> but this causes Raffi to spiral out of control because apparently now she is obsessed with him. Which is weird because they barely had any screen time in season one. So while back on Earth, they had to figure out what did Q change. And so they realized he prevented um, Renee Picard from going out in the outer space. There she was unable to discover something and then the Federation never got formed. And so while there, they make a reference to that one Star Trek movie when they were back in time where that dude with the music on the bus and... He learned his lesson from Spock. So when Seven started to go towards him, and he's like, I'll I just turn it off, lady. <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, 
And so, you know, they're doing all that while doing their, once again, another spy caper type episode. And then Gerardi's all like, oh no, the bored queen, she's like dying. She needs neural energy. So she hooks herself up to it. Talking about, I'm smart. I can like resist her and blah, blah, blah. And all this other stuff. Which just makes it for a dumb plot. So, of course, she gets assimilated by the Borg lady. Her consciousness is inside Gerardi. Oh, Gerardi's not in jail, by the way. <laughs> and her and Rios are no longer a thing. And so, like... Basically, Q's there, but he's not really being himself. And then Guinan's there, and uh, Lord Jesus, like, I'll get into that later. Because that whole summoning the Q thing was just weird. <laughs> and so, like, hey, then you got the whole soon thing, and the genetic crap, and then the Borg Queen is working with him, and he wants to prevent it so he can be a big shot. And so, basically, they save the day, and then they go back into, like, their regular time, and but let's get into individual character stuff and why they bug me so much. Let me start with Seven. Now, I've said this before because I made a solo video about this. In Voyager, Seven of Nine was my favorite character. She was intelligent. She had a great story arc, emotion, all this and that. And yeah, the actress is gorgeous. But, you know, the whole her being hot has nothing to do with it. I just like how she was the data of that show. Or at least half of him. The Doctor was the other half. And so she was a great, amazing character. Since the Picard series, she is no longer intelligent or smart. I like how 20 years has passed and she has changed. She wears her hair down now. She wears regular clothes. Um, but her attitude and personality is so grumpy. She's, since Picard season one, she has just been grumpy in everything. Because of all the stuff that happened, you know, um, what's his face? That, 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 um, Bork boy, I forget his name. He died, Egypt, he died and everything. She went after her lover who had him died and everything. But the thing that bugs me the most about her is not only is she no longer intelligent, because she really isn't. Like, things that people should be able to figure out, she should be able to figure out. And she's unable to. She still has her implants, which bugs me because I wanted them taken away, but apparently they wanted to keep it so people can remember, oh, this is who this person used to be. But in this season, they're taken away. And so, was the part that really, really bugs me is that she is a murderer in everything now. Every time she has a problem with somebody, she sets her phaser to kill and she just murders them. She's constantly shooting up places. And that's not the 709 I remember. So what the heck turned her that way? Well, it turns out, see, I always assumed she was in Starfleet, quit to be a Ferris Ranger, which is just like a bounty hunter type, vigilante type person, and like, I assumed that. But apparently, which makes no freaking sense once again, is that in season two, they say Starfleet would not let her join because she was former Borg. And they have a bias against that, which is weird because they let other former Borgs in the Federation. But the story needed to be edgy and dark and show the Federation in a bad light. This pisses me off. I'm tired of them showing the Federation being evil. And so because of that, they won't let her join. And But yet they let Egypt join, and he's former Borg. And he was a former Borg child. Picard, who was human, Borg, and then human again, they let him rejoin as captain. And they let other people rejoin the Federation that was assimilated. Now, what's even more messed up is when you go into season three. In season three, she's never had no real proper Starfleet training. She, other than being on Voyager, she's never went through the ranks. But yet, when we see her in season three, which I don't know how much time has passed, she is now a commander. And not only is she a commander, but she later becomes captain. How? She became a Starfleet officer a heck of a lot faster than Kirk in the JJ movies. That don't make a lick of sense. And then you have the whole her and Raffi thing. Their relationship is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. And it's to the point where the writers couldn't think of nothing for them other than just to argue and everything. Why? 
because it was actually a joke. At the end of season one, those two held hands. And so people were like, okay, what their relationship gonna be like in season two? Why did they hold hands at season one finale? It's because her, Jerry Ryan, the actress, and the guy who plays Hugh said, wouldn't it be funny if Seven and Raffi was in a relationship? The writers went for it and made it a thing in season two, but they had nothing for them. So all they ever do is argue, argue, argue. And then they break up in season three and then they get back together at the end again. And Rafi is now the first officer to seven, who is a captain, which is a big complaint I've had in that other review. Nothing is thought out in this series. They just think, okay, whatever, let's just do this. Let's just do that. And let that be that. That don't help with the genuine story and character arc and development. But hey, I digress. Also, going back to Seven of Nine, one thing I thought was very weird and very strange and a huge missed opportunity was she seemed to not really be phased by like Q. She knows who Q is. She's met him before on Voyager. She's met his son. His, his son literally made her naked. <laughs> <laughs> and everything on Voyager. And there's no mention of like Q son Jr. whatsoever. And she kind of asked like, hey, like she knows like of Q, but she acts like she really doesn't know who Q is. Like nothing ever phases her and she has no expression. She didn't even bring up none of the Voyager encounters that she had with Q. Seriously, these writers have never ever watched Star Trek. Then there's her and the board queen. You mean to tell me that Seven to Nine is barely phased by that of the board queen? They don't have no interaction with each other. They don't have no long, deep conversations with each other. They act like they don't know who the other person is. And don't give me that whole alternate reality um, board queen thing. Because remember, she's unfazed by like space and time. She has all her memories. She knows who Seven of Nine is. She has literally said on Voyager, Seven of Nine is her favorite. Out of all the board drones and stuff. So how does she not try to manipulate or try to convince like Seven or Nine or try to have a conversation with her? Now Seven does have gripes when it comes to the Borg, but it's very, very, very brief in the show. Other than saying, oh, they destroy lives and this and that and my family was killed by on board and blah, 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 blah. She doesn't really... Like she's up... Like here's the thing, she's upset throughout the entire season. But you really, truly, honestly don't know why, because it's multiple things. Her and Raffi are constantly arguing. She doesn't like or trust the board. They're sent back in time, but it's like she's constantly pissed at one thing after another, but she doesn't really, truly, honestly express why or explain why she's really pissed off. And this is why I hate this version of Seven of Nine. She's always angry. She's always moody. She's always trying to start arguments with people. And she's constantly killing people and setting her like phasers to kill and everything. Like this seven of nine pisses me off so much. And the fact now that she's a captain in season three or the ending of season three makes no sense. It makes no sense how she rose to the ranks of commander after a short period of time and became that of a captain when Starfleet's all like, nah, we don't want no board drones in Starfleet, even though they have let other ones in. So it's just kind of like, does season two even really exist at this point? Next is Raffi. Raffi, I do not like. I've never liked Raffi. And it's not the actress fault, it's the writer's fault. Because they write her to be the most unlikable character next to Michael Burnham. Which is funny because they're both women of color and both black and they both wrote them, wrote them to be like terrible people. Why is that exactly? I don't understand that. But anyways, I didn't like how they handled Raffi in season one. Basically, she got fired because of something Picard did. They decided, okay, this is what happened in real life with black and white people, so hey, let the white man mess up and then we'll fire the black woman. 
So this causes her to live in the trailer, which is don't make no sense because people aren't supposed to be poor in the 24th century, and a drug addict, which is also even weird because there aren't supposed to be drugs on earth. They can drink alcohol, but no drugs. But anyway, so I never liked her character because of that. Then halfway into season one, they all like, okay, she has problems with her son. So then she turns her life around and she stops being bitter. And now she starts being that smart first officer everybody was supposed to like similar to Michael Burnham and so like then all of a sudden they do like a 180 and she's really excuse me really smart and capable and everything and this season they're all like okay we need something for her to do so what do they do they have her be obsessed with Eleanor makes no sense because him and her didn't spend that much time in season one but she is obsessed with him when she's the one who tried to get him in the Starfleet and she didn't try to get him in there a nice way. Oh no, she manipulated him into joining Starfleet. Really? You had to make her into another worst character? So, oh look, he went and died. And so now she feels terrible and she's constantly seeing his image in every other person. And it's like really getting to her. She feels grief stricken by that. But why? You barely know him. She didn't really interact with him that much in season one. This is very similar to that whole Picard Data thing in season one when Picard acted like he was madly in love with Data when they barely had any time in TNG, but because of the movies, they decided let's just roll with it. This is the dumbest plot they could ever do. Instead of trying to actually show Seven and Raffi being in a relationship, they just show Raffi being pissed and like, obsessing over Eleanor and that's basically just the Raffi character in this season Rios Rios is an odd character and I don't really like him much I'm tired of him always holding a cigar when there aren't supposed to be no drugs in the 24th century but apparently he really likes them he likes holding them he finally gets the light one so weird that like they use old-fashioned candles I mean, uh, matches and stuff like that and they don't know what that is but then they know what that is and they don't know what a, a modern day like you know whatever <laughs> but anyways his whole thing is because he's hispanic they decided to do the whole immigration thing with him and to show how hispanics were treated badly during the time trump became president so they brought politics in there and current day politics but they didn't use allegory and so when he shows up he shows up at the clinic it gets raided by ice and then so like he befriends this one doctor lady falls in love with her likes her son and stuff like that and basically his whole story is the love story of like the season you know he has forgotten about Gerardi and them sleeping together but hey whatever continuity doesn't make no sense in this show so watch anything else and so like basically that's all really he does this season he just falls in love with her to the point where he wants to stay behind because she convinces him to stay behind even though it's gonna screw up the timeline but hey whatever time has no meaning no more and continuity and stuff like that so he stays behind and what happens to him when he stays behind he does him and her form a clinic and they help people out but he gets into a bar fight where he gets killed i mean they could have wrote it to where she's the one who dies in the past um and like maybe he took her to like the future and everything similar to like what kirk did with that one woman even though kirk should never brought that lady to the future and stuff like that but then again she jumped on board the ship when they got transported up so whatever but they could have done that and they could have had written him off but him and her like just live happily ever after instead of staying in the past but that's basically all he does this season he's just there because he was there in the first season but he doesn't really serve that great of a purpose because he's basically just hanging with her q frustrates me this season q has always been a cool character He's a little bit of an antagonist, a little bit of a protagonist. He's in the middle and he's always there to help humanity out, even though he always acts like he can't, he does care less. He loves Picard and he loves teaching Picard a lesson, even though it tortures the crap out of him. 
But those lessons that they had in TNG was always vital and always potent and stuff like that. They always had a meaning, they always had a purpose, and they was always for the greater good. Whether it was Picard, you know, wanting to have a real heart, but then his prosthetic heart, or like, you know, Picard trying to teach humans to stop being so reliant on technology, or teaching Picard that, look, man, you ain't ready for the galaxy. You don't know what's out there. Let me take you behind to the edge of the Delta, Qu um, Delta Quadrant and everything. And let me show you <laughs> the Borg <laughs> and everything. And, you know, he's always helped humanity out. He has a soft spot for them. Here, his plan makes no lick of sense. He sends Picard back in time, or he goes back in time and he messes up the timeline. Then he sends the other people, um, well, they have to go back in time and fix everything, right? And apparently Q is interacting while he's in the past, but he's interacting with Renee, doubt, uh, making her doubt herself to not want to go on this space mission and stuff. And that's what causes the timeline to get screwed up. So, he also messes around with the whole uh, new, uh, Adam song soon and whatever. And gives him the cure to help his daughter with genetics and stuff like that. But then it's weird. When he contacts that dude, he doesn't just appear in front of him. No. He sends a message through the 3D printer. Why not an email? Why not a text? Why the 3D printer? <laughs> but Q's not acting like himself. He doesn't speak the way he does. He's aggressive and angry. I think he even slaps Picard at one point. Q's just bizarre in this season. He's not the person you know. And they try to use the excuse of, oh, he's dying. That's his big reason why he's acting weird but we've seen him die before and never act this foolish plus what the heck exactly is killing him cues can't die they just can't unless another cue kills them that is the only way they can die because they are literally gods and everything they are immortal but this was probably because the actor is older now. They don't want to keep using the excuse of why he's older. And other than him just wanting to look old because Picard looks old and everything. And, you know, that was just a dumb, like, reason for doing that. And then, so, like, apparently he said this whole thing was so that he doesn't want to die alone. He doesn't want Picard to be alone. He wants to show Picard, hey, you got a family, this and that. Still a weird lesson. Because the whole Renee thing doesn't make no lick of sense. But it does, we do find out that a lot of events happen because they already happened in the past. So, in a way, Q made all this stuff happen years ago. And he had to set things in motion again, I guess. But, but that's just the writers saying that. I just don't like Q's motivation in this. And then when you get to season three, oh look, at the very end, Q is alive. So what was the point of him doing all this in season two? <laughs> Guinan. So the original Guinan showed up, Whoopi Goldberg. And she showed up around the time she was sick. And she had to take a lot of medication. So she was bigger than what she normally is. And so I'm thinking to myself, cool, Guinan's going to go into like the past and like all this other crap. And, you know, since Q changed the time, she will be able to know what's like wrong and everything. Because she can sense things like that. But no, she gets sidelined. The original Guinan and stuff. She has no idea what the heck has happened in the timeline. And apparently she's older now because apparently their species can be older if they want to. You didn't have to use that excuse. Just let her look the way she does and everything. And so when they go back in time, we have a new Guinan, young Guinan. Young Guinan doesn't look or act like the original Guinan. Young Guinan is also muscular and skinny. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of weird when you see the skinny muscular one, but then centuries later when she gets older, she's really big. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I would have been okay if they just would have used regular old um older guidance and stuff. Then people be like, oh, she's not older, she just always looked like that. And so like I don't know, it's just weird. Older, the younger guy just acts so much differently 
than like the older one. Not only that, but like she doesn't seem well. No, time hasn't been affected yet. But time is technically being affected because Q and like the Queen and like you know the card people, they're alternate on uh, they're altering reality. So she should be able to pick up on something, but she's not. Also, she wants to leave Earth because she sees how racist white people are treating like other races, and she just doesn't want to be bothered with all that, which is kind of weird because Gaiden doesn't seem the type of person who would just flee like that. She will try to talk people out of it, you know. And this guy in the younger one just isn't wise. Now we did see a very young guy in back in like uh, Mark Twain days and stuff like that. And she wasn't all that wise either. But that was like over a hundred and a half years ago. So you think she'll be just a tad bit wiser? Because remember, she met Picard already. Why doesn't young Guinan remember who Picard is? I don't understand that. She should remember him because they met many years ago in the past. That don't make no sense. So she has no idea who she is, but she befriends him in a way because his convincing story and stuff. Then, you know, that's when that whole dude who, like, from the Voyager episode makes a, uh, a guest appearance in this season, and he takes her and Picard captive because apparently there, oh, Lord Jesus, I hate this whole summoning the Q thing. Apparently there was some kind of conflict, something like that, and there was a peace treaty, and they have, like, this special, like, wine that can summon Q. They drink it. They make this weird, loud, burping noise or whatever. And it's just weird. It doesn't make no sense. In order to get a Q's attention, all you got to do is say Q and piss them off and they will show up. That's all you need. You don't need special wine and a vase and a vase and all this other crap. And so basically the, the Voyager dude, he just hates aliens. because he, um, he met them when he was a kid. They um, tried to erase his memory, but didn't have enough time to do it. And he remembers who they are, so he has a vendetta against, like, aliens. Would have been so much interesting if they just would have brought that dude from the 29th century and had him play his character. That's it. Just saying. Just saying. And, yeah, so apparently, like I said before, the whole Q thing... But why he did everything was to set things in motion because that's why they happened years ago. So Guidance all like, I, um, I was always waiting for you to figure out on your own when you saw the picture of Rios in my bar, but you never picked up on it. And, you know, so I still don't like how the writers did that, you know, how they're all like, oh, in order for all this to set place in motion, the people from the future is the one who set things in motion along with Q. Don't make no sense. Don't make a lick of sense. The Bored Queen and Gerardi. So, first the Bored Queen. This Bored Queen acts a lot more human than normal, but she's still good at what she does. Um, and Gerardi is just at the point where she's all like, oh, I didn't get to go to jail, but I'm still lonely in every reality there is. And, like, you know, I just play with cats. And so, like... She just doesn't feel like she has a place no more. So, in a way, when she saves the Bored Queen... Which, by the way... How in the heck is Gerardi smarter than both Seven of Nine and the Bored Queen? I don't get that. But Gerardi is kind of like the Tilly of the show. And when you look closely, they favor each other in the face a little bit. But I like the actress who plays um, Gerardi. I just don't like the Gerardi character. She's basically the Tilly of like the show. And so when the Bored Queen does take over her mind... I will say, boy, she rocked that red dress and she gave a nice singing performance. But everything the Bored Queen did after that in her body was just weird. Like I said before, the outfit that they wear is just clothes and stuff. It's like clothes that try to look like armor or whatever. Then it's like, it's weird seeing the Bored Queen do hand to hand combat. But she needs her army and she doesn't have it. So she starts assimilating people. But the problem is she's so weak because of what happened. She has to make makeshift nanoprobes out of the technology they have then and there. That's cool. And so the Borgs aren't really the way they act, um, you know, in the past. She needs help. So she um, is desperate and she talks to Soon. And so, like, 
and she's trying to make things the way it was in that alternate reality where the federation is the confederation doesn't make no sense because in that reality she doesn't have her drones because they are executing them all and they're about to execute her and every aliens they're trying to execute they're a lot more ruthless than the federation is so why the world would she want to go back to that reality and apparently now the board queen can tell when time has been altered that's never been brought up in the past they even had that one episode of seven of nine and shattered um, where she wanted to know what the heck happened to the ship and the plan they had with the species A472 uh, and Janeway. And, but 7 and 9 didn't remember who she was and nothing like that. So this is just thrown in for whatever reason. And so, like, it's just weird. In order to take over Gerardi's mind, they need endorphins. So she has to have Gerardi drink and act aggressive and all this other stuff. And while it's an interesting plot that could be used for any other type of sci-fi show it's just weird here because you know the Borg don't need that in order to be the Borg when the Borg takes over your mind they take over your mind <laughs> but they making it seem like Gerardi is so smart and so real strong that she's unable to let the Borg Queen take fully over unless the Borg Queen tricks her well that Romulan lady tricked Gerardi pretty good with just a mind melt and so like yeah so they're trying to redeem the Gerardi character but they're trying a little too hard then it turns out the reason why the boy queen is the way she is because she's lonely okay one we've already heard that speech before but when Picard told her like look man you wanted me as like an equal to you like as a partner and stuff like that that was done so much better than here other than oh you're just lonely and you want a family so they decide to merge both consciousness and live together in harmony and let the Borg be nice I don't want no nice Borg <laughs> in fact I don't want Borg period because Janeway was supposed to kick their butt <laughs> but then Gerardi's all like alright I got 400 years to think about this and so she takes the ship and she leaves um how are your friends going to get back to the future if you can't slingshot them back to time and whatever? Oh, they didn't think about that. <laughs> and so, like, um, she leaves. And then she's the one who was in the beginning of, like, the episode to where she needed to use their shields to generate, like, this big shield um, wall to prevent this energy from destroying half the quadrant. What exactly is that energy that tried to destroy half the quadrant? It's never been explained. Just like the robotic tentacle people from the end of first season. They have never been explained. I hate when this show does that. They will have some type of world ending thing that's a big portal device with this evil alien species that's super powerful that can destroy them all. And they never explain it in the next season. So they decided, all right, we're just going to leave Gerardi as like the board. Q didn't try to save her. They didn't try to save her. And now they won't ask, and now they want permission to join the Federation so they can stand there as the border to, pre to prevent whatever alien species trying to come out the portal. Who wrote this crap? <laughs> Seriously. And then an even more bigger insult to injury. Is that in the third season where the Borg are there, the gut Borg are nowhere there. There's no mention of them. And in fact, the Borg haven't been seen in 10 years. So either they retconned the entire second season or 10 years has passed. <laughs> All the stuff with um Soon and like the, uh, the, the clone girl was cool. I didn't have a problem with that. I like seeing Brett Spiner be like evil and everything. It shows like, you know, he's big into genetics and everything. And that's why his people, um, his descendants always like look like him and stuff, which I didn't need that explained. You know, you could have just said, oh, they just look the same, whatever. And so like, apparently he cloned like his daughter 
and he loves her but he loves the experimentation even more she gets pissed when she gets cured by q and she leaves him and everything this causes him to be pissed and then he realized oh look i could be an evil tyrant in the future so hey let's do that <laughs> so then he goes on his way trying to like kill people and like um, prevent Renee Picard from like, you know, doing her mission. And then when that fails, which then he's going to work on the con project. I don't like, why couldn't that be the entire season? First of all, even though I like the stuff that happened between him and his daughter, you know, the daughter went off with Wesley cause he's now a traveler or whatever. It was pointless adding this subplot in the whole show. They didn't need the whole add the whole clone genetic thing to soon. They just need to bring Brett Spiner back. They needed the Android girl to do something because she got retconned uh, <laughs> and taken out the show in the third season. Um, now she's going to be on Goosebumps and everything. It's coming out very soon on Disney Plus. And so the whole like soon and genetic storyline, that was just utterly pointless. And they didn't have to add that in the show. It served no true purpose to the overall story other than just cramming it in there. Also with Eleanor, like the hologram, I noticed an Easter egg. The hologram had on a mobile emitter. The same exact kind the doctor had from Voyager. So that's kind of funny, like a nice little Easter egg of like this alternate reality. Somehow they have like, you know, a mobile emitter from the 29th century. Which, by the way, in season three, Raffrey's um, hologram had another mobile emitter, but it looked completely different. So it's kind of like, not talking about this, but the one from season three. So Starfleet just lets like holograms walk around as they wish, which is weird because they treat the holograms like slaves in Voyager and then they treat the androids like slaves in season one of Picard. But then, of course, at the very end of the last episode, Eleanor is brought back to life. How? Did time reset itself? Well, technically it did, but for whatever reason, they didn't do old school like time travel on this, where Eleanor should have still been alive. Instead, Q brought him back from the dead, which is odd and weird. So it's like Q can do that, but he couldn't put Picard back in his human body. He couldn't make a separate Gerardi, like, you know, and then have like the Borg one, which, you know, so it's kind of weird because it's kind of like she's just Borg now, you know? I really hate how they have butchered the Picard character. They just said they don't care. They didn't make him interesting 20 years later after TNG. They just kept dumping on him. The season one, everybody just didn't know who he was or kept making fun of him or pissing on him and stuff and now in season two he's just going through this weird story arc of him always having flashbacks of his mother him thinking um she was murdered but turned out no she hung herself and everything like that um because she was terrified of his father and whatnot and you know and it's like you know i just think it would have been a better backstory if they would have wrote it but they can have the abuse of father they can have the mother committing suicide but that being the reason why he wanted to escape and go on the space and find a new family and all this other crap just made him seem so weak and that's one problem that they've been doing with him ever since this show started it's just making him weak and everything then you have the whole plot about the whole Watcher thing and the whole Laris not Laris thing. It was weird because they needed a reason to bring the actress back on the show because she didn't tag along in their little time travel adventure. And so, like, they had the Watcher who looks like Laris for whatever reason, but with normal looking ears. So she helps Picard out in, like, his mission. And it looks like they're starting to form a bond, a strong bond to the point of, like, romance and everything. And apparently she's been watching over Renee and it was always her plan to like, you know, I guess sacrifice herself for Renee if it ever came to that. And what she had to, because in order for the mission to succeed, there has to be a Renee who lives and a Renee who dies. The one who dies is the trick soon into leaving her alone. Cause he tried to blow the place up with like drones and he tried to kill her with poison on his hand, all kinds of stuff, right? And so it was cool to see her and Picard like do stuff together, but 
every scene that had Picard in it, like through the halfway point of the season, I just got bored with and fast forward. I got tired of seeing the flashbacks of his mom. I got tired of him doing the whole hide and seek thing. Why hasn't his vineyard like changed in all these centuries and it looks exactly the same? And so like, it's just like, I don't know, him, he didn't even really have that much interaction with Renee. I assume she would be the big focal point. I assume we would see Renee in every episode contemplating if she should go into space, if she should not, having people try to harm her, this and that. They didn't do any of that stuff, which would have made the show a lot more better. Instead, he gives her a good old Picard speech and then we barely see her for the rest of the show. It was pointless making her a Picard and her being the one who helps form the Federation if they wasn't gonna do nothing vital with her character. But before I wrap up this video, there's a few little things I just wanna get off my chest that just bugged the crap out of me. The vineyard. I don't understand how his home has never changed in so many centuries. Like you think it would have changed a little bit, but no, they just kept it the same because they didn't have the budget to change it. Also, why in the world when seven to nine got reassimilated by the Borg when she got shot and was dying, why when it reassimilated her, her implants all of a sudden came back in the same exact spots that her original implants were in? That don't make no sense. Not only are these not the same nano um, probes that she had from Voyager, these are more human made and stuff and also a little bit more boring, they shouldn't be in the exact same spot in the exact same design. And not only that, but it's kind of like, okay, so if she can have her implant showing, then what about the, then like, what about the people, my camera died. So what about the people who like, um, got assimilated as well? Why did they just look human? They just had little veins on them, but that's about it. Why didn't they look more Borgish like seven or nine or have more implants showing out? I mean, that's what happens when you get assimilated. The nanoprobes will put like, you know, smaller implants on you, but then the Borg have to put like bigger stuff and body parts on you and stuff. So why didn't they have the smaller Borg implants on them like normal Borgs do when they get assimilated? If these are technically different Borg from an alternate future or whatever, then why does seven to nine revert back to the way she normally does? Like, do you see what I'm saying here? But anyways, that's just my impressions of like the entirety of like, you know, the season and stuff. I don't think it was very good, very well handled. I wish they would explain that energy being what alien species would create it. The whole time travel shenanigans didn't make no sense. Also, what didn't make no sense was the whole Eleanor, like, hologram and stuff. Like, okay, so Gerardi, who's, like, super smart, she programmed the ship computer to create a duplicate of Eleanor, personality and all, from the moment he died. So Eleanor is over here doing his ninja moves on all the board, and instead of using, like, a phaser, he decides to use his trusty sword. Um, okay, so I guess people in the Confederation have swords as well, but anyways, um, not only that, but I don't recall seeing him even using the sword on the Borgs. Maybe he did, I fast forward to the part where I probably missed it, but it's just dumb, and then the whole Raffi being so crazy over him is just even dumber. But anyways, I just think this season was not handled well. There was no real true thought plan put into it. Um, it just was a disappointing season all around. And before I end this video, I just read that Patrick Stewart's talking about how like there was an alternate ending to that of season three of Picard where like you know he's sitting at home in his vineyard and he hears a woman's voice calling out to him and nobody knows who that woman's voice is and most likely it's his wife but who is it laris is it beverly they don't know and they're like fades away or something like that he fades away or something you know and then there's talks about how there might be some picard movies and stuff which Here's the thing, season three ended, the TNG cast 
it gave them a better send off than say Nemesis did, right? And so the question with fans is like, why do you want to undo that? But you know, at that same time, it's like only season three is really good. The first season had promise. It's just, it wasn't handled right. And we didn't want to see a bunch of new people. Then season two, I just complained about now. And it's kind of like if they were to make Picard movies, it would probably be best if it's just him, like, you know, going somewhere. And like, I don't know, like do what Picard does best. Like what he did before, um, when he was in Starfleet or before, like, you know, digging up stuff and looking for things and, you know, he could find like an alien civilization that's like ancient, find some type of MacGuffin or something like that, or an ancient artifact or something like that, you know, because he doesn't like wearing uniforms. He doesn't really want Starfleet stuff being around, um, in like, you know, his projects and, Originally in the first two seasons, he didn't want people from TNG. Well, then this would be fine if he does something like that. But if they make it so world ending or something like that, then, you know, you're going to need a crew. And, you know, adding a brand new crew where people don't like them, like the first two seasons, it makes for a hard watch. Like the reason why season one and two was so hard to get through it's because his crew was unbearable. They had a bunch of unlikable people. And in Star Trek, you're gonna need some people to like. So like, you know, if he was to do something like this, where it's kind of like Indiana Jones or something like that, and maybe Q can teleport him somewhere or help him find this ancient civilization or something like that, then that would be fine because then it would be solely focused on Picard and Picard only. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.